Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. I was recently asked a question in the comment section about birth control. And since that time, I've been considering this topic from the Word of God and asking the Lord about how I can talk about this for those of us who are Christian women. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. And some of the things I'm going to say are offensive to people in the world, but I'm not here to be popular or to say what is easy or flattering. I'm here to tell God's people the truth so that we can understand the spiritual battlefield that we are on in these last days. Hallelujah. So birth control. What is birth control? Where did it come from, and what is its intent? Well, we can see from the Holy Word of God that God gave a penalty unto the woman for taking the forbidden fruit. Let's read this in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. And may the Lord bless the reading of his Holy Word today. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy de desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So God has made it so that the woman, because of her being beguiled by the serpent, should be under the authority of her husband and that she would bring forth children in sorrow. And she would bring forth many children. Now, this is not an easy thing, but I would say unto you, my sisters, that the curse that God placed upon mankind is not easy for anybody. The man was given a consequence too. And his consequence was, if we read now in verse 17, we read, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. You see, sin has consequences, and we who are God's people understand that there are many sorrows in this life, and they are not in our control. Those of us who are Christian women understand that the satanic offer to women to control the size of their families is not something the devil gives to us so we can have peace and freedom. It is given to us for our corruption. And it is a temptation for a woman to think that it's a good thing to prevent pregnancy or to control how many children she has. But verily, those things are in the hands of God. And we can see from the Holy Scripture that children are a blessing from the Lord. So let's go to Psalm 128 and verse 3. Psalm 128 and verse 3. Well, let's begin in verse 1. Blessed is every one that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. So there's also a promise unto God's people that when we fear him and obey his commandments, that we will be blessed. And children are part of the blessing of God. Now, there's things about having children that are difficult. For example, 
children when they're first born are a lot of work and the woman's body is given to taking care of them even before they're born. So we who are women have the ability to bear children. And that means that our body goes through some things that are not pleasant. It begins, of course, with a process of menstruation where a woman goes through cycles every month that affect her hormonal balance and affect her mood. And she is more likely to be susceptible to strong emotions that mislead her than a man would be. And that is part of what God has cursed the woman with. And that is because she desired something that God had forbidden. She sought for the forbidden fruit, which looked good. It seemed good for food. It seemed good to make one wise. But what it did was it brought forth death. When a woman is enticed by the serpent to partake of the forbidden fruit of feminism, it can seem good, it can look good, it can look like freedom, it can look like choice, but really what it is is usurpation of what belongs to God. So it is in God's hands when we're a married woman how many children we have, and we're not going to conceive or bring forth children unless the Lord blesses our womb. Likewise, if we try to interfere with the bringing forth of children in order to determine for ourselves what is good and right instead of relying on God, then what happens is there are many consequences that come upon a woman. These practices of giving women birth control was so that, first of all, the woman could be enticed to do things that pertain to men. So she could be a co-wage slave and tax slave alongside her husband by delaying having children. <clears throat> they might also have more financial ability, more provisions, because they limit, the man and the woman both, limit how many children they have. And we know that children cost money in the beginning. But in the end thereof, that's not the case. So in a family, when children are born initially, there's a lot of drain on the finances and the time, particularly of the woman, but also of the husband. There's a great responsibility for both the man and the woman to care for the children. The woman's body bringing forth milk, her time, her effort, her strength, and also her husband's time and effort and strength in providing for her when she is weak, when she is giving birth and afterwards, that he is compelled then to work harder in order to provide for those children. So initially, there's a financial drain, there's a time drain. And what happens when a young couple have children is they cease to be as selfish as they were in their youth. Before we have children, my sisters, we tend to be a little bit self-centered and vain. We're thinking about how pretty we are, for example, for our husband, or how to please our husband. When we have children, all of a sudden, it's not about us anymore. It's about that little life that God has given us. We grow up as women when we have children, and our husband, who sees us doing that, he also gains respect for us because we're not this selfish vain creatures that we once were. And you know what? I know it insults people when I tell them that, but you know what? I was once selfish and vain when I was young too. And my moods and my feelings controlled what I said and did, and I was not a very great help to anybody because I was subject to the moon, to my cycles, and I thought that it was a good thing, as many women do, to forbear having children. Now, the thing is, the reason the devil gives you birth control of various kinds is so that you can be enticed to do things that are wicked. Giving a woman birth control enables her, for example, to engage in fornication, sex before marriage, trying out different men to see which one fits properly. To delay having children 
is to give the woman power that God did not intend her to have. It entices the woman to leave her natural use and to do things that ultimately bring her much sorrow. So there are a number of forms of birth control that I'm going to talk about right now. First of all, there's the pill. There's various spermicides and devices. There's injections. And there is the surgical practice of tubal ligation. All of these have physical consequences for the woman. When a woman takes birth control pills, she's more susceptible to certain events happening in her health that are very bad. Her hormones become subject to a pharmaceutical drug rather than her learning how to cope with her own cycles. So women are told, for example, that they have some kind of strong PMS or, or menstrual syndrome where their mood needs to be controlled by a drug. So a woman falls into the practice of using a drug because she hasn't yet learned how to handle herself when her moods change in the various cycles. So a woman becomes subject to pharmacia or sorcery as a young woman, often because her parents think she's out of control when really she needs to be learning how to bring her emotions into subjection. So when we're a young woman, we don't try to regulate our hormones by taking a drug because such is sorcery, and we know that sorcerers do not inherit the kingdom of God. Spermicides are dangerous drugs that kill the sperm of the man that we're having intercourse with. And they are very caustic substances that aren't good for a woman either. So women who take these kind of things or use these kind of things with a diaphragm, for example, or with condoms or with other injectable things that are placed in the birth canal, these things cause a woman to be more susceptible to various kinds of infections, particularly yeast infections, which cause the whole immune system to be in disarray. Various devices implanted in the uterus cause abortion. So when a woman has an IUD placed in her uterus, it's not that she doesn't become pregnant. It's that when she becomes pregnant, that IUD causes that young life to cease, and it's a kind of abortion. Many people don't understand that an IUD is actually a weapon of murder. And it's not preventing pregnancy. What it's doing is preventing birth. Hallelujah. Various implants placed under the skin are things that are technologies that are placed in a woman's arm so that she doesn't bring forth children. It regulates her hormones in such a way as that she's not fertile. And what doctors won't tell you is that oftentimes these things are not temporary and are permanent. So are injections like Depo-Provera, where a woman has an injection every three months so that for three months she won't become pregnant. But these things cause her to be less likely to regain her fertility later. And the practice of preventing pregnancy, delaying pregnancy so a woman can choose when she has children, makes it so that when she's older, she's less likely to be able to conceive. And of course, the final method of birth control, when all these other things have been implemented or, or not, is the practice of a woman murdering her own child through, through a pharmaceutical or a, um, a surgical abortion. The idea that a woman has a right to do this, that her body is her own territory to control is wrong. A woman's body is not her territory to control. It is. It belongs to God, first of all. We as women who are Christians, we understand that our body is given to us so we can be suitable servants to our husband or in our father's house or in the body of Christ. But our body is not our own. Any man, more than a man's body is not his own. So a woman who is married, she is subject to her husband. She belongs to him, which is a beautiful thing, by the way. 
We as women used to want to belong to a man. And these days the feminists are like, oh, oh, you don't want to belong. You can't be your husband's property as if that's an evil thing. Well, the opposite of that and the other choice, and there's only one other choice, is for your body to be subject to and the property of the state. So a woman who has been given the idea that she can control whether or not she becomes pregnant, she is enticed often into things like fornication or pursuing a career, which will do her no good. It will bring her much sorrow because when women try to do the things that men are commanded to do, this doesn't bring forth good fruit. A woman who exalts herself to have a career is trying to do something that keeps her from doing what God called her to do, which is to be a married woman, to serve a husband, to be devoted to raising children, to caring for the home, for caring for the lives of the people in her family. And having a family, by the way, is a beautiful thing. It's a blessing from God. So women who are enticed to do other things through the use of birth control and other things, of course, that they don't see that when they're preventing a pregnancy, they're cutting off themselves from the will of God. They are seeking to control things that belong to God only. They are playing God. So a woman who has fallen for the lies of feminism. So she wants to control when and how she becomes pregnant. She might be enticed to have sex with various men because then she'll know before she's married to them whether or not it's a good fit. Well, this causes her to become corrupted and it makes her less likely to be happy in a marriage. You see, we give ourselves to a man once he has taken us in covenant and promised us that he will love us all the days of his life, that we are one flesh with him. If we have sex before that, then we have become defiled and corrupted. And of course, birth control entices a woman to think that she can get away with that. It also encourages adultery. A woman who can forbid herself by taking a drug or using a device or taking an injection or that sort of thing, might think that she can get away with having an adulterous affair with a man not her husband simply because it seems that the consequences have been removed. But what happens is the consequences are still there. They just change. Fornication is a sin that will keep us from the kingdom of God, my sisters, as is adultery. And we who are Christian women understand that the consequence of pregnancy shouldn't be something that we're trying to prevent or that we fear. Rather, if we're walking in obedience unto God, then it's not a bad thing to bring forth children, even many children. Now, it does require that we work. And a woman's work is very, very valuable. It's the glue, I would say, that holds society together. The feminist Marxist satanic plan to get women away from doing that was simply so that the serpent could take control of your children. And so when we bring forth children and we're also pursuing a career and we're working alongside of our husband, what happens is that our children end up in the care of a stranger. The natural use of the woman is to bring forth many children. And when we bring forth many children, initially that's hard, but later it's easier because those children are part of the family and they all are being taught, God willing, and according to our being disciplined ourselves, to be part of the family, to serve one another, to lighten the load. And as we get older, our children care for us when we become older. You see, to forbid yourself children is selfish. And it seems like that will be a good thing, but later it's not. And women who have fallen for the lies of feminism and the lies of eugenicists who tell them, oh, it's a bad thing to have children. Well, 
women who have fallen for that end up bitter and broken and alone. The agenda of the serpent with birth control is to make the woman a prostitute for the state. And then the state takes control of any children that she has. And this brings forth much sorrow. The origins of birth control was to bring forth in women the idea that having a lot of children was dangerous, risky, and difficult. That it made a woman be in bondage to a husband who was probably cruel. That's the feminist lie. When in reality, the woman had a place of honor in her family. She was respected and cared for by her husband who loved her. And she cared for him and for his children. And in the long run, what they had were many, many blessings. Women who have been enticed to depart from that end up alone. They end up bitter. And the things that they did to their body to prevent pregnancy often have severe long-term consequences, such as uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer. And if you don't think that's true, just look into it. The thing is, is, the pharmaceutical system says, oh, we can give you a pill for this, a pill for that, an injection, an implant. We can do all these things for you so that you don't have to suffer at all in this world. And that is a lie of the devil. The world has suffering in it. The world has pain. And living requires us all to work. A woman's work once made it so that she was a blessing to many and many saw her and respected her for what she did. Her integrity, her strength, her selfless devotion to her family was held in honor in society. And these days what we have is women who don't want to serve the Lord and they don't want to serve a husband. They want to serve themselves. And they bring forth children that are in like manner, selfish, entitled narcissists. So life isn't easy. We all suffer consequences for sin. Is it easy to go through our menstrual cycles as a young woman? No, but it is something we can learn how to handle. Is it easy to bring forth children? No, it's painful. Is it easy to raise children? No, it's often quite difficult and not every child is going to be easy to raise. Some children are rebellious. All children are different. But those of us who don't want to take on that role end up being a whore. We end up being a whore, a lonely, old, bitter whore. And of course, I don't want that for you, my sisters. Hallelujah. Finally, I would say unto you, those of you who are young women, when we seek a husband, we should seek a husband that we respect we desire to serve. We realize that marriage is a blood covenant for life. We don't get a second chance with this one. We, the wife is bound by the law unto her husband for as long as he liveth. So we would retain our honor, our virginity, until God shows us a good, godly husband that we desire to serve. We don't seek the things of this world. We don't seek the solutions of the serpent in order to have fun having sexual intercourse without the responsibilities and the duty to love and serve a husband who also has the duty to provide for and protect us and our children. We choose righteousness. Is this easy? No, but I would say unto you, the other path leads to destruction. I remain here for you, my sisters. Feel free to write to me if you like. My email is always in the description box underneath the video. And may the word of God go forth today and draw many people into the light because you know what? It's a blessing to be a mother. It's a blessing to serve a husband. And feminists have taught us that those things are bad. They're oppressive. It's about being controlled or, or dominated in ways that are unfair and unkind when really it's about being protected and provided for and being honored in the days later 
when we are old. Instead of being a bitter old prostitute, we instead are honored in our family because we have served the Lord with godly fear all the days of our life. And a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen.